What is the worst movie you've ever seen? No, I'm not talking about Transformers 2 or Grown Ups 2. I mean a movie so bad, so fundamentally broken, that it leaves a pit in your stomach or makes you feel frustrated and angry beyond any reasonable measure. This is a question I've been asking myself for a while, and I think it's about time to do something about it. So I've pulled up the list of the bottom 100 lowest rated movies on IMDb, and I'm going through them one by one to find the worst movie ever. Welcome to the search for the worst. Leonard Part 6 is the worst thing in the history of anything ever. I don't think the art of cinema can reach any lower than a lazy, unfunny comedy that has no idea what audience it wants to entertain. And that's certainly what Leonard Part 6 is. Let's just say there's a reason as to why Bill Cosby bought the TV rights to this fucking abomination. So as few people as possible would ever see it. I swear, with each passing scene it gets worse and worse, more and more unbearable. The search for the worst wheel sure chose a good time to pick a fucking Bill Cosby movie. But whatever, let's roll with it. Immediately, the film opens with a terrifying and warped title sequence that makes no sense until you've seen the movie. <laughs> The creepy childlike drawings with that weird music made my skin crawl. But once it was finally over, this British twat explains why we're starting at part six. His explanation is that because Bill Cosby, or Leonard as I'll call him from now, is some kind of retired super secret agent that everyone respects, but parts one through five are all classified for some reason. Whose five previous adventures would I'm sure have enthralled you had they not been confiscated in the interests of world security. So we're moving on straight to part six. So many jokes I could make. So, so many inappropriate jokes. So with the pointlessly confusing title explained, we cut to a bunch of dudes in diving suits who have some kind of genetically modified fish that barks like a small dog, apparently. They send the fish down a tunnel towards a couple of rich people in a swimming pool. Really? So I guess this sets the bar for the style of humour they're going for. That style of humour being predictable, boring, unfunny and cringy. So once the fish has had enough of reading the conveniently placed underwater playboy... Wait, no, we're not abandoning this scene quite yet. Just think about this. Someone or something put pen to paper and wrote this scene down. They wrapped their brain to think of something funny this fish could do and this. This is what the comedic geniuses came up with. Why, why, why am I even here doing this? Why am I even here? When I could be in Hollywood shitting out fucking terrible scripts every hour. But you know what? This isn't even the worst of it. It's only just begun. So the movie is framed around this butler character, who spends most of his time narrating exactly what's going on, despite us having eyes and the ability to figure out what's going on in a completely simple and easy to follow setup. So Leonard is our main character. He's an ex-secret agent who quit for reasons that he never really explains, or refuses to say. Just imagine I'm making jokes here, they write themselves. He has the most tired, calculable backstory of every secret agent movie ever. I don't even need to explain what it is, because you already know it. Once you find out he's retired and was the best, the rest of it fits into the mold you'd expect. So Leonard owns a restaurant and some guy comes in and threatens to kill him for some unexplained reason. This guy starts firing in a tightly packed, highly crowded space, and no one reacts to it apart from Leonard. Even when he pulls out some kind of mini automatic weapon, still, no one really reacts. You see the joke is that every missed shot is somehow helping with the cooking of the meals. This hilarious and perfect scene finally ends with a bullet ricocheting around the room until it hits the gunman in the back of his head, killing him instantly. And to celebrate, Leonard angrily grabs a carrot and takes a bite. Not sure why, I guess they thought it was funny. Leonard shows up at the secret agent HQ, and he's pretty angry because this guy was sent to kill him by the secret agents. Or something. It's never explained why, they just move on. You know you could have just called him and asked for help, instead of endangering an entire restaurant filled with innocent people without losing the life of one of your highly trained operatives. Wait, why do I even fucking care? So this table was filled with a bunch of unfunny, overacted caricatures, who are the leaders of the secret agent spy thing. They explain to Leonard how some asshole is going around murdering people with highly trained, genetically altered animals, instead of just using powerful and efficient weapons or assassins instead. Now, is it supposed to be a joke that she tripped, or did that happen on set and they just left it in? I don't even know this movie. They go into excruciating detail on other incidents like the Playboy fish, like the really funny one where a cat killed one of their agents with hairballs, or how 18 squirrels killed a grown-ass man. I get that the joke is that the idea alone here is fucking retarded, but it's not funny. It's just shit. Finally, they get around to explaining that some crazy vegetarian is causing all this monkey business. Get it? Because monkeys are an animal and she's using animals to kill people. 
That's funnier than anything in the movie, and it was fucking shit. She's a vegetarian, a former ecologist, and she's bent on taking over the world. You may think the fact that she's a vegetarian might be completely irrelevant, but it's actually extremely imperative to the plot. In the end, Leonard refuses to help them, making the entire scene pointless, because he wants to spend his time winning back his ex-wife instead. When he gets home, he's visited by his daughter, who reveals to him that she has a new boyfriend who's 66 years old. Meet Giorgio Frantosi. Ciao, Leonard. You see, the joke is that she's 20 and she's having relations with a weird old man. And that's funny. Also, another opportunity for an easy and appropriate joke. Not gonna do it. Leonard sits down to have a talk with a 66-year-old man, but the entire scene is dedicated more to showing off the fact that he's holding a Coke bottle than anything else. So again, it's pointless. We cut to some agent spying on the vegetarian baddie, which is stupidly obvious and clear by itself, but they feel the need to over-explain it with the boring, unfunny narrator. Meanwhile, across the city, another funeral was imminent. Outside the headquarters of International Tuna, CIA operative Charles Polk was keeping surveillance. Eventually, a bunch of toads swarm around the car. Then, despite there only being, like, 34 of them, they somehow lift a one-and-a-half-ton car into the nearby river. Oh, wait, no, no. The huge lifts poorly hidden underneath the car did all the heavy lifting. The artistry and care behind this picture is truly impressive. We then find out why Leonard's wife left him. I never laid a finger on that girl. Wait, what? What? This movie was released in 1987, what's happening? Leonard calls up his wife to talk about the 66-year-old man dating his 20-year-old daughter, and she invites him round for dinner. Dinner here, tomorrow night, at nine. The next seven minutes or so are dedicated to a tiring, seemingly infinite montage of him getting ready for his dinner date with his ex-wife. See, the joke here is that he's Asian, so he screams hi -ya! before doing anything. Because clearly all Asian people have some relation to martial arts. Wait, why is he working out mere hours before seeing her? Does he not understand how exercise works? And two, one, and two. We're going to see aerobic section now, let those knees bend. See, the joke here is that it looks silly for a grown man to do one of those old aerobics tapes. Come on, Leonard, can't you get it up? See, the joke there is that he's lifting his arms and legs to stretch them. But what she says has a double meaning because it also implies that he can't get an erection. And impotence is funny. What a... What's the point of any of this? I don't need to see this. This movie could be 10 minutes shorter. Come on. See, the ongoing joke here is that his butler keeps going to his tie collection to find the right one for his date, but he keeps turning them down. And that's pretty funny. When they'd separated, he had moved away as far as he felt he possibly could. I left him alone with his thoughts during the agonizing ride to her house. The joke here is that he says he moved as far away as he possibly could, but he only moved across the street. And that's really funny. The scene builds to the interaction with his ex-wife. And when it finally happens, the punchline is that she keeps pouring food on him because she still hasn't forgiven him for his past actions. Something told me at a glance that the evening had not gone well. You see, the joke here is that, look, I, I don't need to explain any more of these. You get the idea. It's not fucking funny. So 34 minutes into that hour and 20 minute movie, and he finally decides to get back into the secret agent business. No idea why. I guess the writers had some more funny jokes to show off. For absolutely no reason at all. No, seriously, I have no clue why this happens. He goes to a fortune teller because he says he needs to, who slaps him in the face repeatedly and squidges his face a whole bunch. Then he leaves. The butler then kits him out in a Ghostbusters costume and gives him a bunch of Deus Ex Machina weapons to use later. Then he gets into his armoured car that has a tank turret on it. What? Why does he have that? I thought he was a secret agent. Emphasis on secret, you fucking asshole. He carefully sneaks into the vegetarian base by firing an endless amount of explosives at the front door and walking in through the exploded wall. This movie has an estimated budget of $24 million. More money than all of us will ever see in our collective lives. Fuck this movie. So the bad guys are vegetarians for two main reasons. One, so they can have a really funny joke where the main baddie constantly eats various fruits for no reason. And two, so later he can use meat as a weapon against them. Yes. Yes, that happens. But before any of that, a bunch of dancers dressed as birds attack Leonard. Then because movie, and I guess they thought it would be funny, Leonard puts on tap dance shoes that the fortune teller gave him earlier, and then he starts tap dancing, and the vegetarian dancers just hide and watch him. Am I... Am I missing something here? Am I missing something? Clearly, the only reason he put on that stupid helmet is so the stunt double could do the dancing without clearly showing his face. No other reason. What's even the fucking point? It's not funny. There's no punchline to that. It makes no sense. So now because he's wearing the tap dance shoes, Leonard can now beat up all the bird men? What? Then the boss baddie straight up shoots Leonard with a machine gun turret. <coughs> but then he runs off and goes to some kind of bee room. As in, there are literally bees flying around the room. I forgot to mention that the only reason he's here in the first place is to get some kind of sphere thing. 
So now you know, I guess. They pretty much present it in the same way in the movie as well. So much like the tap dance scene earlier, in this random little box the fortune teller gave him, is a queen bee that is there purely because the writers had no idea how to advance the story. This fucking fortune teller character is the laziest, bullshit, sloppiest plot device I think I've ever seen. I'm serious, I honestly can't think of anything more lazy writing-wise I've seen in a movie before. Are you kidding me with this shit? Are you kidding me? Look, I'll add to the sound design. <laughs> Fuck you. Leonard grabs the thing and on his way out is ambushed orange by a guard who grabs the boomerang off his back. He throws it at him but it comes back and stabs him in the chest and kills him. That's the payoff. That's the one and only reason his butler equipped him with it earlier. May I remind you that this is a PG intended for children? I, I think. Despite the playboy fish, the constant murder, sexual innuendo, and other things not suitable for children. It's more jumbled in that sense than a fucking Transformers movie. The sphere's gone. It's like she doesn't even know what it does. Well, it says sphere here in the script, so I guess that's what I'm supposed to say? Wait, why am I here? What's going on? Leonard goes to his daughter's show she mentioned at the beginning of the movie. And I am so excited about this play, Daddy. I just know it's gonna make me a star. <laughs> where the joke is that his daughter undresses in front of the entire crowd, making her parents uncomfortable. That's the payoff for the setup. God, fucking Christ. I just, just the same thing every time. Blah, 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 things happen, everyone gets tied up, and Lena's ex-wife gets kidnapped by the vegetarians who want the sphere back. They've got mom. They've got mom. A guy with red hair took her away. So he goes back to the secret agent HQ to retrieve it in exchange for his wife. The red liquid neutralizes the animal's parasympathetic system, leaving the brain pan flaccid and open to encryption. But the puzzle is, how did this woman activate them? So going back to that whole toad or frog thing for a second, I don't know which one it is. Sue me, I don't fucking know. So ignoring the fact that a giant lift propelled the car into the air with the toads, in this movie universe, these toads were magically strong enough to lift a car? They don't even try to explain it. You can have stupid shit happen like that in a comedy as long as that's the tone from the beginning. And as long as it's funny. But this movie flip-flops from trying to be serious at times into random nonsensical shit like this. So to get the sphere back from his secret agent bosses and save his wife who hates him, he triggers a bunch of bunnies to brutally murder everyone in the cheapest, worst death scene I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Fuck you, movie. Fuck off. On the drive back to the vegetarian base, the fortune teller randomly appears to give Leonard some more shit to get out of him of situations he's about to be in. When he arrives, Leonard gives them the orb, and they don't give him his wife in return in the most predictable plot twist ever conceived. So, you thought you could fool Medusa Johnson? Jesus Christ, that guy's the biggest ass in the universe, holy hell! This scene is rounded off by an ostrich burping. Which is both funny and random, because ostriches don't normally do that. Leonard! Was that... was that really the best take you had? Come on! Leonard! They leave a bunch of killer lobsters in the room with them instead of finishing them off with the automatic rifles they all carry around. This part is funny because the lobster is heading towards his balls to pinch them and a lobster pinching a cock is a really funny idea. I said I'd stop explaining these jokes, but I can't help but feel like I need to be as obvious as the movie. Then Leonard pulls the random ass melted butter stick from his fucking pocket, for fucks, and threatens an innocent animal to cut through metallic wire to free them, or he'll boil them alive until they die. What a fucking hero. Woo. Melted butter, boil! Melted butter, boil! Melted butter, butter! He eventually defeats the vegetarians by pulling out magic meat from his pockets. Yep, which he slams onto a couple of the henchmen's chest, which burns them for some reason, because vegetarians are Pokemon, and their weakness are meat-type attacks, apparently. Does Bill Cosby have something against vegetarians? His anti-vegetarian agenda is both confusing and stupid to me. Death to all mankind! Well... Um, that happened. Leonard throws a bunch of Alka-Seltzer into each vat which makes them explode, and everyone in the facility gets drowned in the colourful liquid. Leonard rides an ostrich from the exploding building, which I guess is the payoff for it burping earlier? I, I don't really know anymore. And that's the end. Well, that was shit. I was right about unfunny comedies being worse than unintentionally bad movies. And while I hate this movie because of its laziness, sloppiness, boringness, terribleness, shittiness, and unfunniness, 
this still isn't quite the worst thing I've seen in the search so far. But the difference here is, as bad as it is, at least it's somewhat a movie, with editing and sound that you can hear. <laughs> and real actors. And it did go by pretty fast, unlike the Oogie Loves, which was the only one of these so far I was contemplating turning off because I was so frustrated and bored. I guess it fits nicely in between Food Fight and Three Ninjas, as far as the overall rankings concerned. I suppose when the main actor and creator publicly disowned the movie, it was only too expected that it was going to suck shitty garbage cock. And up next in the search for the worst is... Manos, Hands of Fate. Well, that sounds... different? So, Leonard Part 6. What a fucking abomination that super surprisingly turned out to be, huh? So what do you think? Do you like or dislike the video? Or more importantly, do you like or dislike how the movie looks? Tell me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure you check out some of my other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye. Water!